blessing be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of God, Lord. Blessed be your name. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday of the fifth week of Ordinary Time. Lot to talk about today, so let me jump right in. Thank you for joining us. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's recollect our minds and hearts. Let's ask God for his mercy that we can be clear thinking and free uh, as we know that we are, to know that we are indeed children of God. Let's ask him for his mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are the way. Lord, have mercy. You're the truth, Christ, have mercy. You are the life, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said, Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground." 
God created man in his image. In the divine image, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food, and to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work he had done in creation. Such is the story of the heavens and the earth at their creation. The word of the Lord. of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you set in place. What is man that you should be mindful of, or the son of man that you should care for him? him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims in the paths of the seas. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, in fact, all Jews do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not wash they, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things they have traditionally observed, the purifying of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. And so the first inscribes question him, why do your disciples not follow tradition of the elders 
but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You regard God's commandment by clinging to human traditions, human traditions, notice. He went on to say, how well you have set aside the commandments of God in order to uphold your traditions, your human traditions. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother. Whoever curses father and mother shall die. But you say, if someone says to father or mother, any support I have had for you as korban, meaning dedicated to God, you allow him to do nothing more for his mother and his father. You nullify the word of God in favor of your traditions, your human, human traditions that you have handed on. And you do many such things. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, um, on Monday, we started to talk about the, the, the book of Genesis, Genesis, the first 11 chapters. And we're, we're in the creation stories here. And I just want to touch on this. I'll talk more about this, uh, I think, in days uh, to come. I just want to touch upon this for a moment, that every culture around the Jews at this time had creation stories. And there's a uniqueness to the creation story that the Jews had that makes them completely different. Now, other cultures had the stories, but not like this. I want to mention three things real quickly about these creation stories. Number one. God made humanity in his image and likeness. Isn't that awesome? No one else says that. All creation is good. We are fundamentally good. Awesome. No other tradition talks about that. And God made us stewards of creation. I don't know what your thoughts are about global warming. It doesn't matter. The point is we have turned the world into a garbage can. and We need to clean it up. And I think we have to be better stewards of creation. And no other culture has that as well. These are just some different things. And we're going to talk about a lot more as things unfold. But let me move to the gospel today because it's an important one. And it's a complicated one. And I, I uh, want to give you some homework to do as well. So hopefully you have a catechism close by. You can do a little homework. And we can uh, maybe talk about this. If you have some questions about this, maybe we can talk about it further as things unfold. So yesterday... Jesus healing the sick, going from town to town, to town to village. And the scribes and Pharisees are all worried about washing hands today. Wasn't even part of the law. That's the point I want to make. This washing of hands they did wasn't part of the law. They were man-made traditions. Teaching They were teaching as doctrine. Human precepts they were teaching as doctrine. And we still do that kind of stuff today. I want to say that. Now, every church has human precepts. And the thing is, you should keep them as human precepts and don't try to teach them as doctrines. Some can get rather ridiculous. One parish changed the carpet in their sanctuary from red to blue. There was an uproar. People didn't know about it. Some said they couldn't pray with a blue carpet. Other parish began to uh, argue and fight about the position of the piano in their sanctuary. And uh, uh, that was a big deal. So what are the human precepts that we somehow make into doctrines? I think, if you and I would just, I just scratch the surface real quickly about this, I think the way we treated eating meat on Friday was something, and I think we're more, much more balanced about it all now. Even though the Pope, whenever he changed it to what it is right now, he said, you're supposed to be fasting in other ways too. You're not, just, not just this. We're not supposed to be telling you everything you're supposed to be doing. You can think some of this stuff up yourself. But he changed it. And, and he made it much more balanced. But in the past, as we said to eat meat on Friday was a mortal sin, kind of missed the point in taking a human precept, which was fine, good, excellent, and somehow turning it into some kind of a, uh, a sacred doctrine, something from God. So that leads me to a larger point here. These human precepts are not to be confused with what we call sacred tradition. Now, we believe, as I have said right here behind me, the positive faith, scripture, and sacred tradition. Please allow me to use Dr. Healy's words to describe to you what we mean by sacred tradition. 
Many people don't understand this at all. So kind of listen carefully to this. And, and uh, if you want to go backwards and read it, you know, hear it again, that will be a good thing. And I'm going to give you a little homework. This passage regarding human tradition, which is what the passage about today, is sometimes cited against Catholic understanding of the authority of tradition here, together with sacred scripture as the rule of faith, both of them together. Very, very important Catholic position. But it is crucial to note that Jesus is not rejecting tradition, per se, which becomes an important term in the early church for the handing on of the authoritative apostolic teaching. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2. Uh, also, uh, 2 Thessalonians um, chapter 3, verse 6. Just, there's other ones like that as well. Rather, he's rejecting merely human traditions that are not based on God's word, that in fact negates the intent of God's word. Paul himself exhorts Christians to stand firm and hold fast to the traditions which you were taught, either by oral statement or by a letter from us, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15. Indeed, the formation of the canon of sacred scripture itself is an exercise of apostolic tradition. Now, here's my homework for you. I want you to go to your catechism with the Catholic Church. Now, I want you to read uh, uh, Numbers 96 to 100. That's four different ones, which might give you a better understanding of what this, this apostolic tradition is that we're talking about here. So, what human precepts are we guilty of somehow making into a dogma? Did you know that the church holds both sacred tradition and sacred scripture as the single deposit of faith? Kind of important for us to ponder all of that. And let me just simply say this about these human uh, precepts. The church, as our mother, has the right and the responsibility of, of giving us certain disciplines that help us on our journey of faith, like Lent. Different things we're supposed to be doing. Uh, these these are important, and, and we should pay attention to them. But remember, they're human precepts given to us by the church, and it's very, very important that we, we kind of separate each of these things as things unfold. I hope I was not too murky with all that. I hope I was kind of clear. We can clean that up as we go somewhere along the way. But here's my question for today. What's the difference between arrogantly ignoring these human precepts, these disciplines, versus simply forgetting them for the moment. Hope you understood my, my question there as well. Anyway, much to think about, I think, for me and for you. So God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Give us some feedback if uh, somewhere along the way we're a little bit too murky with all that today. Thank you for joining us. Talk to you again very soon. Bye-bye.